We worship you, God. You are worthy. Awesome. Hey, please be seated. Good morning, church. How are you doing? Enjoying the extra hour of sleep that you got? Or did your body wake up still at a regular time going, why am I up still so early? Yeah, that's what happened to me. But hey, good to be here together. Um, good morning. You might wonder why am I so dressed so well normally. Um, it's actually because, well, uh, Anthony and Nisi and Ruth and myself are going to uh, Terry's dad's memorial service this uh, afternoon right after the service. So I don't know. Maybe this will be a new look, too. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> but I tell you, welcome. Welcome all of you to uh, GC2. Hey, um, just kind of get us started. We've been going through a, uh, a, a month-long, more than a month-long series now on experiencing God. We've been talking about just being devoted in his word and listening to him and, and getting a chance to be in prayer. And um, I thought today, as we get this service started, when we praise the Lord with song, how will we praise the Lord without voices another way and just have an opportunity for anyone here that just kind of want to give a little popcorn praise about like, hey, how have you experienced God? Answered prayer or uh, just a, a blessing, anything um, you'd like to share. So I'm just got this mic here. We're going to open up for just how we're going to start the service today. <laughs> well, well, I was just going to thank God and praise God for grandchildren, which we are out here visiting with and having the opportunity to come from Illinois to visit my daughter and her wonderful husband. Awesome, awesome, and, yeah. And, and also a blessing to know that they go to church and we are welcome here. Amen, <laughs> you are sure, indeed. Thank you, thank you, Debbie. Yeah, Grace is such a cutie. Awesome. Weddings and beautiful flowers. Yeah. Amen, yeah, yeah, so... Uh, Several of us were at uh, Ron and Quan's daughter's wedding. Marcy and her husband James got married yesterday. And uh, yeah, these are some of the flowers from it. I think my leg's a little sore from the dancing too, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else? You know, how have we experienced God in ways? Also, even just like you know, devotions, maybe had a chance to be in God's word and God gave you a reminder spoke to you? Well, I'm just glad that he uh, woke us up so we could be here to uh, praise God today. <laughs> a great song to start the, the praise. And, uh, you know, also our small group is uh, really um, experiencing God through our study and through the th things that he's teaching us and, uh, you know, just the things that uh, we share with one another community. Same like with the uh, Java Jump, a small group of guys that get together on Friday mornings to just kind of share life and uh, mm -hmm. it's just, uh, you know, just praise God that we have this community and that we can learn more about and experience God together. Mm. Amen. Yeah. So I'm, I'm Chris Surdock. I've been here a couple times and I just want to say thanks for welcoming me when I come. Um, I travel around San Diego and I help small churches that don't have worship or when their worship leader ha is having a baby or something like that. <laughs> and um, it's just nice to be welcome in the different houses of God and to know that we're um, all part of the kingdom of God and that we can celebrate the Lord no matter where we go. And so thank you for making me feel welcome when I come here. And it's just exciting to see all that God's doing all over San Diego and many churches all over the place. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being. You are, you are just also ex our way of experiencing God because you're, you're God's provision for us. Well, just uh, taking care of Number three, by, yeah, that's one of our announcements. So Jess and Casey had their baby girl on Monday evening, uh, Addison, Addie, and so. Uh, I'm still here, and I haven't been sent to Puerto Rico or, um, or the Virgin Islands. We are still sending people, and uh, right now I'm just still awaiting. Mm -hmm. still a waiting game, but they think uh, hopefully it'll be wrapped up by February. So I still have a few more months I have to get through. Okay, amen. Okay, great, good, good. Yeah, uh, if you don't know, Dana serves in a Coast Guard service, and uh, it, yeah, good thing we can still be here together as a family. Awesome. Well, hey, um, so what we do here at GC2, different from some other churches, is also we, we, st we started with a message. We started the teaching, and we respond to that teaching in worship. So um, let me lead us in prayer together, and uh, 
Let's get into today's lesson. Father, we just give you thanks as we worship to you, worship you today. We give you praise not only without song, but without testimony, and just praising you for your blessings, um, praising you for answers to prayer, uh, praising you for uh, uh, insights and truths that you speak to us through. We can experience you in so many different ways. And today, we want to experience you in worship, in your word, as a body of Christ. And Lord, we pray that your spirit will be powerfully present, as, especially in this time of teaching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, I have a question for you. I want to be a little interactive today. A lot of, actually, a lot more interactive today. So, you go, so I'm asking a question. They're not going to be rhetorical questions, okay? So it means an, an answer, okay? Hopefully, just shout it out, okay? So the first question is, um, who is God for? Who is God for? Wow, okay, awesome, okay. Yeah, like Romans 8.31. Joe, if you show that, you know, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Okay, yeah, God is for us. Now, next question is, what does it mean to be for someone or something? What does it mean to be for someone or something? You, what? Act on their behalf. Great, okay. Good. Be in front of us. Okay, someone who's for you, leading you, leading you. Okay. Yeah, all right. Resources, helping. Okay, cool, cool. Thinking of the welfare of the person. Yeah, thinking of the welfare of that person. Um, awesome. And so, well, okay. Think about it. How many of you were watching the World Series? Okay, any of you were cheering for a team? Okay, maybe the Astros? Yeah? Okay, okay. Yeah, it was great. You, so if you're for the Astros and they won, you're like, whoa, you're like, oh, you're, you're just as happy as, you know, all the fans in the, in the stand and they themselves, right? Okay, now, if you're for the Dodgers, and that last Dodger batter struck out the bottom of the ninth, how would that feel? Oh, bad, okay. The bad. All right. So when you're four, you're doing all these things you said, but you're also, let me share this first point here, is that you're emotionally invested. When you are for someone, you're emotionally invested in that person or that thing. All right? Um, so if God is for us, does that mean he's emotionally invested in you? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, let's, let's do some sports analogy here. I mean, does he cheer for you? Like, you know, you're out running the devil, and he's going, yeah, go run, yeah, yeah, faster, faster, awesome. Okay. Does he cheer for you? Does he groan? Does he groan when you fumble and, you know, fall, and you're like, oh, whoa. Yeah, it does. You say, like, okay, where did that come from? It comes from the Bible. All right? In the Bible, Luke 15, 10, it says, In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. You know, the Holy Spirit showed me this week that I've been understanding this verse wrong for practically all my life. Because, you know, when I lead someone to Christ, I say, Hey, you know, the angels in heaven are rejoicing because you accepted Christ. And I always think, this is verse is talking about the angels rejoicing. And this week, the Holy Spirit said, no, no that's, that's not what it's saying. Because it's not saying the angels are rejoicing. I'm sure they are, but that's not the point. It is, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels. The angels are an audience. Something is happening in your presence. You're watching it, right? I mean, you might be happy, too, and everything, but that's, you're not the main event. So it says, I tell you, there is, Jesus is talking about people coming to Christ and saying, in heaven, 
There is rejoicing in the presence of the angels. Now, who else is there besides the angels, the heavenly host in heaven? God. It's God who's, yeah! He's going, hey, what's going on? He's doing the happy dance. Can you imagine God? Or maybe, you know, the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, kind of like going, you know, or doing that. Shoulder bump together, football players do that kind of thing. Is that cool, though? What it's saying is that when God is for us, he rejoices. He rejoices in your righteousness. He rejoices in your salvation. He rejoices and when you're making great decisions. How about the morning, gro- morning groaning part? Well, same thing, Romans 8, 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the Holy Spirit groans, too. When we're struggling, when we're failing, we're... You know, he's, maybe he's watching us like we're... If you're a Dodgers fan, watching the Dodgers in that seventh game, you know, oh, oh, oh. But we'll see here a little bit further. He does more than just groans, but he's... God is connected, empathetic, sympathetic, emotionally invested in you. Why? Because he's for you. He's for you. He is for you. Okay? Secondly, if you're for someone, and we talked about, many of you brought this up, if you're for someone or something, you help, right? You help. So, uh, pull up that next slide, Joe, please. You know, if ever had a friend say, I'm here for you. Yeah. I hope you do. I hope you have friends like that. And I hope you have a friend who actually meant it, okay? And you know, if that friend really meant it, I'm here for you, what does that mean? That means like if you need them in the middle of the night, your car is broken down and you're on the side of the freeway, you can call that friend up and say, hey, I'm stuck. Can you help me out, pick me up? Yeah, that friend will come for you because he's for you, right? If you need, uh, you know, you, maybe you're a parent with you know, kids and you're like, ah, oh, I need a babysitter. Call your friend. Friend says, sure, I love to babysit for your kids because they're for you. That's the idea of someone who's for you. They come to help. When we are with or for someone or something, we help them. Now, what does that mean about God being for us? He helps. He serves. He goes the extra mile for us. God is for us. And Hebrews 2, 16, 18 says, for surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself suffered when he was tempted. He is able to help those are being tempted. See, there's a level for us that we, we need to wrap around our heads around every day because it's amazing. It's a, you know, sure, we got friends and help us, for us, but we, there are very few friends who say, I will, I will put aside everything. I will sacrifice anything so I, so I can help you, Right? You know, there's some friends you go like, okay, well, I don't really want to call him or her. It's kind of, you know, late, and they're really busy, and there's no, you know, they probably wouldn't say anything. But there's some other friends who go, you know, if I call them, they will come anytime. They'll do anything. They'll, they'll, if I even needed money, just, you know, they'll send me money and everything. They'll, they'll just do that. Or you have a family member or a parent or even a child who's like that. That's really, that really touches your heart, right? When you have someone in your life, will go that far. 
What scripture here is saying, God has gone even further. God has gone even further than any human analogy, human relationship that we can't even imagine that is, that is so awesome. Because he gave his son, and he gave his son to be like us, to be, to be suffering as, as we have suffered, and tempted as we have, to go through all the stuff, and all the mess, and all the messy stuff and junk that life gives to us. And he did it for us. And of course, the most important thing he did for us is to give his life on the cross, to die for our sins. And what does that mean for us? Romans 8.34 says, Who then is the one who condemns no one? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. See, it didn't just stop at the cross. It continues now. It continues now. He's at the right hand of the Father, interceding, serving us, in, and, and speaking, upon, uh, speaking to the Father on our behalf. We know, you know, if you've been in church for a while, you know God does all kinds of things to help us. He protects us, he leads us, he guides, he guides us, he answers prayers, he loves us, he's merciful, he forgives us. Back to four, that word four. What is the difference between doing something for someone and being for someone? Let me ask that question again. There's, there's a distinction between doing something for someone versus being for someone. What's the difference? Commitment. It's commitment. It's some, to be for someone is, is the heart. I mean, I can do something for someone and I don't really want to, right? Oh, I guess I should, you know, I look bad. You know, I'm the pastor, you know, I got to do the Christ, Christ-like thing. No. That's doing something for someone without being for that person. But when you're for someone, yeah, you're doing something for, but it's from the heart. I, I, yes, I see that hand. No. Oh, I was just saying you enter the situation. You enter into the situation. Yeah. Back to that emotional investing. So again, when God, when Romans 8.31 says, God is for us. Don't take it for granted, just like, oh, yeah, God, God does all these things for me. No, again, his whole attitude. I mean, I don't know what, you know, kind of faith background or, or theology you come back, come from, but, you know, when I was growing up, and even going to seminary, you know, I don't know why I was exposed to some of this, the, the, the Puritan kind of uh, history and stuff like that. Not as it was taught, but it just kind of, I mean, taught because of history, but it didn't, wasn't taught like this is how it should be, but it kind of impressed me. That, like, you know, there is, um, there is a, um, a guy named Jonathan Edwards, a Puritan uh, preacher, and he had this famous sermon, Sinners in the Hands of the Angry God. You know? And, uh, and, and it's, it's said historically that through him, a, a revival came into America. And, uh, through his preaching, but I was just like, that's, that's the kind of impression we get. It's sinners in the hands of angry God. And yes, there is truth about the wrath of God, and not denying that. There's judgment that's coming, but in this present stage and age, that God's demeanor is not sinners and angry God, but a God who is for sinners. For his children. And I'll explain to you a little bit more. If you're not sure about that, go into one more thing before I go back to that. Okay. God is for us. He's emotionally invested in you. He helps. And then thirdly, when we are for someone or something, we are generous to them. We are generous to them. Right? Right? Just like that friend who is for us and do anything. When 
here for you. They're generous. I'm not just talking about money, okay? I'm just talking about everything. Their old time, everything. They're here for you, and they'll just give of themselves. Well, um, recently a, a church has been partnering with a company called Thrivent. And uh, since around May or April, we've, um, we've we worked together and trying to get some community seminars and together. And the last one was uh, one on saving for college education. And so Thrivent is a Fortune 500 company. And it's a financial services company. So like many other kinds, they offer like investment options, you know, IRAs and annuities and insurance plans and mutual funds and everything. But here is one huge distinctive that is different, makes them different from any other financial organization I know of. And it's said in this, it's said in this shirt, okay? This is a shirt that uh, they gave me afterwards. And what it says is, live generously. Live generously. And that's their logos, okay? It's a Christ-centered company, financial uh, service company. And yes, they do like so all the other things, like other financial service companies and like financial planners, they do it similar to, you know, how they make their money is through commissions and, you know, a small percentage of whatever you invest with them and stuff like that, okay? But unlike, you know, you know, you've seen commercials for Edward Jones or, you know, Merrill Lynch and all those other... You know, is Merrill Lynch not around anymore? Okay, never mind. Um, but all of that, that dates me. But, um, but where all the other financial service companies, you know, say their goal is to now help you achieve your financial dream or aim, like, you know, retirement, uh, saving for college, or having a nest egg uh, for a rainy day or wherever it is, okay? Thriving does the same thing but that's not their overall agenda for their clients or their members. Their overall agenda is that they would live generously. Let me show that one excerpt, um, Joe, from the, their website. So this is just from, uh, from their front page on the website. So they're a number 318 on a Fortune 500 company. So they're not a dinky little company. They're a huge company. But here on the other side, right besides what they say, who they are, in, the, in terms of their su financial success is their challenge to their clients is to dare to live generously. So one of the programs they do is that if you're one of their members, they don't call it clients, if you're members, you automatically get $500 a month at least or more that they encourage you to earmark to a charity, to a church, to an organization that you want to support, okay? So while other companies are giving out dividends, you know, say, hey, you know, spend this on whatever you want. They say, hey, we encourage you to live generously with this dividend. They don't call it a dividend. They, they call it another name. But why do they do that? What's, what makes them different? It's because they are a Christ-centered, Christ-oriented company. So Why? As, why is generosity such a value in our Christianity? Why is generosity such a value in our Christianity? It's not in the Ten Commandments. I looked it up. It was not there. Thou shalt be generous. Okay. It's not there. Why? Right. It begins because God himself is generous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. It's, it, first of all, it starts with the very core character of God. God is generous because he is for us. God is so generous, he gave his own, one and only son. And if that spirit of God is in us, if we ever have the Holy Spirit as his children, if we have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, it's part of us. And that's why generosity is part of our faith. But just kind of back up a little bit, a couple of verses, just to remind us of how generous God is to us. Romans eight thirty two. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? All things. Or Ephesians 1, 3. Praise be to the Lord and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Why is he so generous? Because he is for us. Why is he for us? Because he loves us. God so loved the world. Which brings up another question. We talked about for us. And probably most of us refer, thinking that's referring to the believer. Which it is. But who else is God for? Who else is God for? Besides his church. Everyone. Everyone. God is for the world. God is for sinners. Um, Matthew 5, 45, he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. The evildoers don't deserve that kind of grace, don't deserve that kind of kindness, but yet God provides these things as generously as he provides it for the righteous and the holy and the godly. Why? It's God's for sinners, too. God's for evildoers. God's not just for those who do his will or love him. God is even for those who don't love him. That's why God so loved the world that he gave his son as one and only son. Because he loves the world. So, as uh, Diane, right? Diane, right? Debbie, Debbie, I'm sorry. Debbie has said, you know, what does that mean? How does that translate into us? If God is for the world, who are you for? Who are you for? Okay? That's, that's the application question I want to have us really think about. And before you answer this, okay, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm for God, I'm for the church, okay? Think about those three characters I said about who, what happens when you force someone. When you force someone, you're emotionally invested in them. You care. You cheer along with them, and you mourn with them, and you're right there with them. Okay, who, who are you connected that way with? Then if you're for someone, you help them. You go out of the way and help them. You're generous with that help. Who do you really do that for? So before you say, oh, yeah, I'm for, I'm for the lost people, or I'm for this, I'm for that, think through, really, are you for in the ways, the tangible ways? I, um, I, I have some suggestions or maybe possibilities of like how you would answer that question, who are you for? Um, maybe as I ask that question, the first thought that comes to your mind is this one, Joe, is, um, I you know, you say, I've never really thought about it that way. Uh, I just do my thing, and I'm so busy that I don't even think about who I'm doing it all for. Okay, is that, maybe if that's one of the first thoughts that came to your mind, maybe you got some work to do here, okay? I suggest you do. Really consider what are you doing for? Who are you doing it for? Don't be so mindless. Don't be so purposeless, okay? There needs to be a greater purpose. Or maybe you had this thought. I'm invested in what I like to do. Just to be really honest, you know, I just like, I do the things I like to do. 
I, I do help if I'm asked to. I, I, but I can't say I go out of my way on much of my own. You know, someone asks me, okay, but I'm not like looking for people to help. And in the same way, neither can I say that I'm that generous in general. I mean, if someone asks me to give and a church asks me to give or there's a mailer that comes in for Thanksgiving, I'll give. But, you know, that's, that's how generous I am. See, that's not really being for anyone. It's just, you're not emotionally invested. Maybe really the truth is you're for yourself. This is a description of someone saying, I'm really for myself. And there's some work there to be done, too. How about this one? Maybe uh, you're a parent. So I'm investing in my kids. I help them with their homework. I love to cook what they like to eat. I drive them all around town. I buy them treats and stuff all the time. I'm constantly going out of my way for them. Definitely, you're for, you're for your kids. Okay, if you're, you said that, you're for your kids. Awesome. Okay. Um, how about you said this? I love my spouse. I'm so happy for him when he's happy. I try to be a support to her as much as I can. I definitely would go the extra mile for him. Can you say that about your husband, about your wife? I see some grins here. <laughs> uh, maybe you need to think about who you're really for at home. All right? But you can say that, yeah, I am for my spouse. I'm for my husband. I'm for my wife. I really... Best cheerleader for them. Best, you know, helper. I mean, that's that's what, I'm, what I'm excited about. All right, how about another one? I'm invested in this church. I really want it to succeed. I serve, I give, I sacrifice. I really want to be to bless the people in the church. You say that, awesome. Yeah, you are for GC too. Thank you. Praise God for you. And we got a lot of people I know who will do exactly all these things without even asking well, how about this? Um, I care deeply about my parents. Um, I mean, uh, dear, deeply about my parents. They gave so much of themselves to me. I owe them a lot. They're getting old now, and I go and see them as much as I can. I send them money. I call them. I do whatever I can to support them. You can say that you're for your parents. Awesome, too. Uh, or I have a buddy who has been a lifelong friend. Uh, we both would do anything for each other. If he needs me for anything, I'm there. And you're for your buddy. How about this last one? I long for the gospel to be believed and for God to be glorified in this world. For me, it's a pleasure to serve him, and it's my honor to do his will. To whatever he wants me to do or sacrifice, I say, here I am Send me. That's someone's heart is for God. Sold out passionately for God. Are you that person? Could you say that to the Lord today? How did you do? As I went through that, you can see, okay. Maybe I'm not as for so-and-so or this as I thought I was, but some areas I am for. Awesome. God is speaking to you and challenging you in all these years, but I want to give you one more challenge here. That on top of your family and friends and church and all the other great people that you are for, I want to add the most important group of people because God is for them. And that is for your neighbors. For your neighbors. Because if you love them, I mean, if you love God, then you have love for your neighbors. That's, that's part of God's greatest command. That's why we have GC, all of the GC too. The greatest command is love your Lord, your, your God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is similar. Love your neighbor as yourself. So you say, I'm for God. Awesome. But if you're for God and you got his spirit, you got his love in you, and you also be for your neighbors. For your neighbors. And that's, by the way, a logo is here. Designed for GC2. Because as we think through all the things that we're doing, 
And ultimately, it's like, what are we here for? Why are we here as a church? We're taking a, taking a play, uh, page out of the playbook of Thriving. So like I said, Thriving does all these other things that um, financial service companies does. It helps you invest money and expand your savings and, and save up for retirement, all those things. But it has a greater agenda, right? As I said, it's a greater agenda that you would ultimately live generously. So likewise for church. We do all the things that we want to do to strengthen you, to have you experience God to walk in faith, to have this vibrant relationship with him, to love him, to love him, the fellowship, and all the other things that comes with church. But we have a greater agenda. And a greater agenda is God's agenda for you and for me, is to love our neighbors. To go outside beyond, this is what is good for me. So you might say, we're not here to make you happy. We're here to help you make other people happy. But when you're doing that, you will be happy. Does that make sense? For our neighbors. Now, what I mean by uh, neighbors? Well, I've, not to a specific person, but here. We suggest that a neighbor is anyone beyond your immediate or spiritual family that God brings you into contact who can bless, who you can bless or serve, okay? So, we're all family here already, okay? You got family, okay? We're not neighbors. <laughs> okay. And that's in this sense. We want to ask you to look at your world beyond your circle of comfort and familiarity and say, who are those people beyond that that God brings into your path that you can serve and bless and be for. Be for them. Uh, it could be your literal neighbor, but of course it could be the cashier you see at the grocery store, it could be your coworker, your friend, your, your um, uh, classmate, whoever that God brings across, okay? And um, how you can bless them? You can bless them in simple ways to be for them and start being for them. Simply like Try to cheer them up. You know, everyone's got, you know, especially the cashiers, you know. There's just hundreds of people, and they got this, you know, they, they've been trained. Like, Hello, good morning. You know, they don't know how to say that. Have you ever said hi to them back, and how are you? I've done that a few times. I should do it more. And they're like, oh, thank you for asking. You know, it's like no one ever asked them. So one of the simple ways is just simply smiling, greeting them, uh, affirming them is another great way. But most importantly, we're challenging you to see if you can help them thrive, help them succeed. What, what I mean by that, so here's, here's an example, just from, from uh, my own story here. So uh, there's, there's a picture of my barber, okay? His name is Lynn, and I put this up on Facebook recently. So I, he's been my barber for several years, and uh, the spirit just kind of impressing upon me. Look, well, you know, figure out how you can, sh how you can witness to him. You know, so uh, he's, he'll ask me always, like, oh, so how's your day? And, and I say, fine. And did you get off from work early? Because I usually go, you know, when it's slower and it's lighter. And I say, no, I... I'm my, um, I'm my own boss. I can, you know, set a schedule. And he oh, what do you do? I said, I'm a pastor. And I just kind of like, oh, see if he's going to say anything. And for a while, for a while he, he didn't say anything. So I was like, okay. And he asked me the same question like a month later after the next haircut. I was like, he doesn't even remember me, you know. Um, so, but um, I just started talking more with him. And the last conversation that I had, a couple conversations like a few months ago, uh, he said, oh, he goes to a church, and uh, blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, that's great, you know, and uh, yeah, I pastor this Christian church, and, and um, but I, I was like, I wasn't sure where he was spiritually until this last time I got a haircut from him. Um, he started really opening up, and I found out he's this really super committed Christian. So he, he, um, he says, I don't worry about anything, you know, I just, just he's trusting in God for everything, and uh, one of the ways he's trusting God, he's going on a four-week mission trip with his wife. He's taking his kids to Southeast Asia with his church. And, 
And he goes, you know, I'm not sure I, you know, can I, I'll have a job when I come back, but that's okay. Because he's just, he's a barber, you know, and he's away for four weeks in December, and uh, he said, well, I don't know, but it's okay. I trust in the Lord that he, when I come back, uh, you know, he'll provide. I was like, man, here's a man of faith. Awesome faith. So I was thinking, for our neighbor, God's impressed about for our neighbor. How can I be for him? And so I put on Facebook, hey, this is Lynn. He's going on a mission trip. Go get a haircut from him. You know? Just go support him. And that's just a simple way. There was, there's a church in, in um, Atlanta. Their story was, um, as a whole church organization, that they wanted to help their local businesses. And uh, one of the pastors there came across one business and just talked to the owner and found out that that month coming up was, uh, was a, would be a slow month, one of the slowest months in the, in the year. Uh, I don't know. I forgot what the business was. Let's just say it was an ice cream business in January, okay? You know, that would be a slow month. So what he do is, says, okay, I'm going, he said, we're going to help you make it the best month of the year. So he tells us your church was pretty large. He says, go to this shop, buy stuff, and then go, you know, get this ice cream, get ice cream, and they had the best, best month of, you know, the, that slow month was not a slow month. It was one of their best months of the year. And, and the owner said, you know, in contact with the pastor, said, so, so what, what do you guys want? He goes, you know, I was thinking, oh, do you want some free publicity? You want, you know, us to, to publicize about your church? And, and the pastor just simply said, no. We just wanted to bless you. We just want you to succeed in your business. And you know, you know how powerful that is? Like, what? You don't want anything f- from us? And you just threw all those people and money at us? And, and you just like, no, this is just because we're for you. We want to see you thrive. And, you know, now this church is a friend forever in that, that business. But they're not asking for anything. This is the idea that we want to take you to. The world is expecting quid pro, pro quo. You do something for me, you, you, know, you expect me to do something for you. And, and they're expecting that of Christians. You're nice, what do you want? You want my money? Uh, you, you want me to come to your church? What is it that you want? And we want to teach people by real life example of ourselves, that God's love is unconditional. God's love is unconditional. When Christ fed the thousands and everything, you know, he didn't say, okay, now, okay, you pay, you, you pay me back now, okay? He just fed them. Yeah, some came, many came to follow him, but that was their initiative. And that's how we want to go. So I want to challenge you. We're actually, uh, what's it, next week? Don, help me out with the timing here. T-shirt. Two weeks? Next week. A couple of weeks, okay. Okay. We're going to challenge, we're going, we're going to get T-shirts with that logos on there, okay? And we're going to challenge you to wear them, not just to church events and Christian things, but to go out about your daily business with for our neighbor on there. And challenge you to just wear it, okay? And if people say, what does that mean? You can, you can start explaining something about the love of God, okay? So explain just the love of God or what your church is doing. Or, and and um, because we want to instill a clarity to what we're about. I mean, this is really nothing new, I'm telling you. But we're clarifying it as a church that we are here ultimately for our neighbors. Yes, we're for God. Don't, I'm not saying we're not for God, okay? And we're not here for, I'm not saying we're not here for each other. We absolutely are. But the ultimate place that God wants to take us is to be for our neighbor. I want, I want to invite um, Anthony to come up and, uh, um, and Gary to come up because uh, we have some things as a, gr- as a church agenda that we want to, to highlight as, but also on top of just this personal challenge. So to, be, to begin with, Anthony. Uh, oh, the mic, yes. Take the mic. 
and we got something that we are for our neighbor locally. Is it on? Oh, I'm yes, good. Yes, sure is. Okay. So, yeah, for our neighbors. So, just like Pastor said, there's things that we can do individually, but we're also looking at opportunities that we can do together. So, one of the things um, in your bulletin, there's this uh, Abraxas High School. Um, Abraxas is a school that's located in, in Poway, and there's um, the students there are students that had a hard time in some of the more traditional regular schools and they go here and, and they get help, the help that they need. So uh, local North County churches are getting together to support their Thanksgiving luncheon on November 17th. And they're looking for, you know, the, the school's looking for support for that. So what we can do, there's a pre-planned pre menu and Sue Burles has sign-ups that we can provide turkey or cranberry sauce, and uh, there's a lot of different things on there, supplies, and also help, set up help. So we're looking to do that. Um, this is November 17th. Um, so, yeah, see Sue if you want to sign up and join us for that. So we're going to do that, and we're just going to love on them, and it's for our neighbors just to support them uh, on that. So that's in your bulletin. See Sue for that sign-up. Thank you, Anthony. So um, in, in about two weeks, uh, we have uh, about three families, uh, mine included, we're going to San Felipe uh, for a short-term mission trip. This is, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is in Baja, California, about four-hour drive. And uh, we, we've been going there to minister to, there's a Mexican pastor uh, that works uh, among his uh, Mexican church and minister in his neighborhood, which is a rather, um, it's a poor neighborhood with a lot of children. And we've been going there, uh, playing games, uh, doing games to get him, uh, uh, to get the kids and, and him to familiarize with, with each other. So they know he's a pastor who minister there and try to get him to be able to share uh, the love of God with them and ultimately the gospel. So um, after about maybe three, four years of going down there. This time, we're planning to, to host a, a, a movie night to show the Jesus film for the children. It's about an hour long. And to draw them uh, there, we're planning to uh, have hot dogs, popcorn, to, to make, it real, uh, uh, make it a real movie experience. Yeah, a lot of times they, these kids, they, they just don't have the resource to, to go to a movie, so this, this will be good for them. And then um, the, the church will be involved the pastor's church, and the pastor will give a message at the end, uh, the gospel message, and we're thinking of doing a magic trick because a lot of times children are, are drawn to magic um, where uh, we have a cup with a clear water put, and then it's tainted with black, and then with a cross stirring in it, it turns it uh, clear again as a way of God um, taking our sins away. So that, uh, the ex uh, the expected cost of that is about 200 um, And then pastor's wife, Anita, she's very, uh, she's been sick, uh, so she lost a lot of weight. Uh, she's about 33 kilograms, about maybe 70 pounds, so which, but her condition has stabilized. But what, uh, what amazes me is that she uh, has a real heart for, for the children in that neighborhood. So what she plans to do is to, to teach them Bible. So we, we're planning to get a a VBS starter kit with Spanish um, to give to her. And then she also requested that if we can provide a sewing machine for her. And that's uh, a, a neat way of, of allowing her to minister to the neighborhood. Because a, a lot of people, a lot of women there, they just don't have the resource to, to buy one. And that allows them to mend their clothes, to help, it, help her to outreach to her neighbors. So that's the first day uh, on, on November 18th. We'll be there for that. And the following day, Sunday, we're planning to minister to the, the kids at the orphanage, a Sunshine Hacienda, uh, started by two American missionaries. Um, so we're planning to also uh, bless them with a taco lunch. Uh, we've been there a few times. Uh, mostly they eat because uh, of the, the number of kids, about 30 plus kids, they have to uh, feed and clothes and, and take care. 
Uh, I mean, for me, with my three kids, I, I thought I have a tough job, but <laughs> this uh, missionary, they, they have over 30 uh, kids, and they mostly eat rice, beans, um, like to tostada. But uh, every time we went, in the past two times, we, we catered the taco lunch for them, and they're so happy, they're, they're so thrilled that um, they get to eat. It, for them, it's a treat, so we're planning to do that. And also, as a way to encourage uh, the, the missionary couple who take care of them, that we're here, we're partnering with them. Uh, we want to uh, encourage you. So that, that costs about $100. Uh, and also craft materials uh, for the children. You can see the list on your bulletin. And then one thing they asked was um, the lunch juice packs, because those they can keep. Uh, every day for lunch, they had to pack the lunch for them. and if we can spend some money to buy them some juice packs they can use every day, that will help out. So yeah, if you're uh, interested, I, I have a sign-up sheet. You can come look up, uh, find me after service, and I'll be in the back. And I broke that down into roughly between 30 40 and $50 slots. You can sign up. So thank you. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Anthony. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, oh, we didn't, just for the sake of time, next week we'll add what we're doing for Tries for Christ uh, this month, and it's a toy drive for, for the uh, Native Americans in, in this er in the local tribe in this area. But um, I really challenge you, invite you to open your eyes, open your heart, open your wallet, to give, to serve, and to do it with that emotional investment. You know, um, we're, we might be great at serving, but Let's not just look at it as a project. Let's not just look at it, done. We did this holiday thing, boom, we're done. But this is something that is of the Lord, that is the Lord's heart in us, that as he is for the world, as he is for our neighbors, that your heart, your investment is in the same way. So we're doing this as a church together, but also I leave, go back to that personal challenge to end here. So I Pray, pray right now and, and in your days, like, Lord, who is it, this person that you're bringing across my path today that is my neighbor? I can bless, I can serve, I can just, even if it's just going to be for 30 seconds in the line in the store, that I could just bless them with a greeting or a hello and a, a friendliness that they will need. Or it could be something even greater to invest in for the long term. But whatever it is, open your heart. Open your heart to what God is doing and leading you to. That's how we experience God even more.